Hi, welcome to this Spanish channel where we speak about cycling. As always, I with my partner in crime, John. How are you? Hi, here we are together in the first episode in English. Yes, today we have the chance to talk with Hugh Carthy, the 25 years old uh, British rider for uh, Team Education First. He has won a Tour of Korea, a Vuelta Asturias, and uh, he conquered the last stage from the Tour of Swiss last year. Hugh, yeah, you are now one of the riders of the peloton settled in Andorra. How are you? I'm oh, very well, thank you. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for taking the time to interview me. <coughs> Uh, what do you think if we start from the past, in, in 2015 and 2016, you rode for the Spanish team Caja Rural. Uh, what effect has made on you as, a, as the rider you are now uh, those two years? Um, yeah, it had a, I think riding for, the, riding for Caja Rural had a, a good effect. A good effect. Uh, it's a small team with a small budget and uh, we did the big races, so you you learn to appreciate the, the small things and appreciate every member of staff, every uh, the masseur, the mechanic, uh, um, because there was less, uh, their role was more important and they had to divide the time uh, divide the time better, so we had to be accommodating, accommodating for that. And I think when you join a bigger team after that and you have uh, more more things available, uh, um, you, you appreciate the effort that a smaller team like Ahura made and, yeah, I think it's good to good to be humble and good to be uh, yeah down to earth. Not not some rider, young rider, they go from junior under twenty three straight to the world tour. Um, sometimes they forget that it's, a, it's more of a process. Mm -hmm. And Hugh, you have already run the Vuelta a España, the Giro Italia, but not the Tour de France. Perhaps the most important or prestigious race. You were going to run it this year, or you still didn't know the list of team riders? Um, this year, with, with in the winter, we talked with the, with the with the team, and the Tour de France was a was a possibility. It was something the team was interested in me doing, and I was interested to do it as well. But um, it's, I just wanted to focus. But this year, I wanted to focus on the on the Giro. Uh, see if I could do a top ten or a top five on GC and. Uh, really focused on that. Um, so I was prepared, especially with the Olympics, um, I was prepared to sacrifice the Tour this year and focus on the Giro, but as we know now, it's, uh, I don't think, at the moment nothing's happened, so, uh, yeah. But yeah, that was that was the plan. I mean, I could have done a Tour, but uh, I thought for this stage in my career and with my age, there's still plenty of time, still a lot of time in front of me. Um, so I was, I was happy to focus on the Giro and the team happy with that as well. And related to this, uh, we've seen you make uh, great results in one-week races or Grand Tours, like in the Giro last year, but also in one-day in one day races. Uh, where do you see your, yourself evolving as a rider? Um, I don't know. I think now, uh, I think definitely in three-week races, Grand Tours. Uh, at the moment, the Giro is a race that I think suits me quite well with the the style of the climbs, the very long climbs, and the high altitude, and uh, the cooler, the well, it can be cooler weather in the, in the spring. Um, so for now, that seems to be a race that suits me, and I'd like to pursue more in the future. But um, yeah, I think any Grand Tour, I think it can be, I think it can be good. Um, one week races, yeah, I've, I've done well in one week races, and um, you have to do those as. You just have to do those. It's not everybody does it. Um, one day races. I don't know. I've not done too many one day races. I think in certain in San Sebastian and uh, well, that's the only really in Lombardy. I think there are races that I can do well. Uh, maybe the age as well in the, in the spring. Uh, but I've never I've never ridden any of the Ardennes races, so I don't know. But for sure in the future, I'd like to I'd like to try one year and see see how I go. Um, we have read that you are living in Andorra. That is a place where many riders from international peloton live. Do you take the opportunity to train with them, or do you train uh, on your own? Um, a lot of the time, I uh, train on my own. I always have them. Um, it's something that I like doing. I, just, I don't get bored on my own. I uh, can do my training and be 100% efficient. Um, and yeah, it's the way I like to train. 
Sometimes I train with uh, with some of the English riders, some of the British riders that live here. Uh, we'll go out or, yeah, maybe not on the bike. Um, but yeah, it's a good place to train and I enjoy, I enjoy living here. You are a, a young rider, you are 25 years old. But when you see uh, cyclists like uh, Bernal, Evenepoel or, or Pogacar win races, do you feel that pressure on yourself or, or you're just relaxed and focus on, on what you can do? No, I just focus on what I can do. In Normally 25 is still quite a, a young age. Uh, it's not really young, but it's not. You're still in the, the first part of your career. Um, no, I think... I think riders like Bernal, well, Bernal's 23, so he's, but Evan Paul and uh, some of the other young riders, 20 year olds coming through now, and I think they're they're the exception. I don't think it's I don't think it's that uh, riders my age are too old, or I, th I think it's that the very young riders now, the three or four very young riders that are in the world now, they're, they're the exception. Um, And to compare yourself to that on age is, uh, I think age when you're in a, when you're a professional cyclist, age to a degree becomes irrelevant because everybody matures and grows at different rates. And you can have one rider that's 21 that's physically 28. You can have a rider that's 25, 26 that's physically 21. Uh, it's very, it's it's very different. I think when when you get older, 25, 26, 27, it starts to become more more even. Um, but yeah, no, I don't feel any. I don't feel any pressure. Um, I'm happy with the way my career is and the results that I've had, the races that I've done well in. And uh, no, I don't focus on anybody else. I focus on the future with, for me. And uh, if there's a ride from one of my competitors is 20 or one of my competitors is 30, it doesn't for me. It doesn't make any difference. And uh, in a few days, we will have uh, here in the program Michael Wood, your teammate. Uh, a rider for whom you have been working in the last years. Uh, did you learn a lot by being his regarius, or what type of uh, things you have learned by being at his side? Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's an older rider. He won't mind me for saying that, but he's, uh, he's an older rider. But he hasn't been a professional for, for a similar, similar amount of time to me, I think. Um, he brings experience from his, from his general age uh, through life, like life experience. And, Um, and yeah, he's he's very he's very good within the team. He's good at motivating the riders and explaining what he wants and what he needs. And um, yeah, he's he's good to be around. He's good to be around. He's a good team leader. And when he races, he always gives 100%. He never he never says, "Oh, oh today's an easy day," or "I don't feel good. Am I going to race?" He'll always. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a good good reference to have in the team. Hugh, you are uh, one of you are part of the new generation of British riders, such as uh, the Yates brothers. Uh, what does uh, difference you uh, you and, and those uh, British riders from from the rest of the peloton? What do you have difference from the rest? Um, I don't know. I don't think much difference to be honest. Um, apart from the language and the nationalities. Um, every every group of riders is just more or less the same. We, yeah. I don't know, it's difficult. I don't think there's anything specific that differentiates us. We have no. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we have much. I think I. I don't know. I don't. I see the only difference between the language and the, our cultural interest in the that is. Well, that's the only difference, but apart from that, I think all young riders are more or less the same. We want the same things, we train the same way, we live the same way. Uh, yeah, it's as simple as that. And uh, this year, if, if the Giro can, can't be done, uh, do you see yourself uh, riding again in La Vuelta and try to change that, that grass that you had last year? Uh, I don't know. At this stage, I don't know what's going to happen in the season. Uh, there's a lot of speculation with the races, and uh, oh, I love if there was a World Tour Niger on a tour. I'd love to, I'd love to do one or two of the, of the three. I don't know which I'll do now. I don't know how my season will change with the with the remaining races that we might do. But, um, but yeah, if there's a chance to go back to the World Tour, then yeah, I'd love to love to go back. I don't know. Last year was unfortunate, and I'm trying to think about it too much, but 
No, I do. If I go back, I go back with a with a different role and a, or a, the same role and uh, try again. Not thinking about last year, just thinking about thinking about the race currently. And do you think that your role the next year is going to be more important in the team? Um, yeah, I think I think last year I made a made a good progression in the team. Um, the team saw that I was more reliable, more more consistent. Um, and yeah, they can they can believe me more and trust me more and give me more responsibility. So yes, I'm happy to step up and they're happy for me to, to take more responsibility too. Uh, as we have said, you are a young rider but with a lot of experience. Uh, with all the you've been in three teams already. Uh, how do you help uh, very young riders and not uh, that experienced like uh, Sergio Iguita uh, when when you when they arrive to your team? Um, I don't know. I don't tend to be too vocal in those kind of things. Um, there are people on the team more experienced and more more knowledgeable to give advice at the moment. I still I don't consider myself an experienced rider. I've got some experience, but I don't consider myself. I don't like to teach. I don't like to say hey, you do this, you do this, or this is how you do. It. I don't like to explain things too much. Uh, to be, I don't want to be patronizing, but. Um, But yeah, sometimes you see a rider, a young rider, it's a bit down, or the the race hasn't gone very well, or the uh, they've had sickness and they're not very they're not very motivated, and then those kind of things you can I can help with. I can say, oh, this is it's okay. These things happen. It's happened to me, and you just got to be patient. And like just ba just basic things and be reassuring. I think that's the way I can where I can help in terms of race tactics. And there are more experienced. You have the directors and. The, The older older riders that can give give advice on uh, on the races, but day to day things, uh, yeah, I can be, I can give advice and I do to younger riders. So with these words of Hugh Carthy, we are gonna close the interview. Thank you so much for being here with us, uh, Hugh. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for the rest of you, we recommend you to subscribe to this channel because in the next week we ha we will have the opportunity to talk with Hugh Carthy's leader. Uh, Michael Boots.